Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using Photoshop. Um, I'll show you some of the basics of how Photoshop works, and then uh, I'll show you how to fill in some colors on a coloring book page. You know, exactly. It, it is exactly what you think uh, when you think of a coloring book page. You'll be filling filling in between the lines. So, um, first of all, uh, to get to Photoshop on your computer. Uh, under the start menu, it should just be uh, under A for Adobe, the company that makes Photoshop. Um, you could, you should also be able to find it through a search if you just type in the search bar here. If you just type Photoshop, Photoshop here, Now before we open a new file, I'm actually going to recommend finding uh, the, the coloring page that you want to edit first. Uh, I find that that's the easiest way to get something to get something else into Photoshop. It's just copy and paste it. You could also download the file and open it. However, the student accounts don't really like students downloading things, so it'll be easier for you to just find something. So you can just do a Google search. I also Found this page, this site, coloring.ws, which is literally coloring book pages for kids. Um, just like you know, when you were when you were in elementary school and you were coloring with crayons, um, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with Photoshop because uh, it'll actually give you an opportunity to practice some sort of fundamental Photoshop skills. So, find a coloring page. You can do a Google search, or you can just use this site. I found a picture of some flowers. I'm going to right click, click copy image and then go back to Photoshop and something that you'll notice is when you now when you create new notice I hadn't cre clicked create new yet you're gonna have this thing that shows up that says clipboard this wouldn't have been here before when you copy something that gets saved to your clipboard um, and your clipboard size just happens to be recorded so if I click clipboard my Photoshop file will be the correct size by default because I already have copied the image. I'm also going to go ahead and add a file name in advance. Um, you could always just do a save as later, but no, no reason to just not give your file a file name now. Um, it's a good practice to give descriptive file names. Um, I recommend your name, probably your last name, um, and then whatever the file is. A descriptive name for the file. Um, please don't leave your files something like Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3, because then in the future you'll never know what anything is. Uh, it'll be much more difficult to find what you're looking for. Um, I usually put underscores, you don't have to, um, but computers actually don't like spaces, so I tend to use underscores in my file names. Anyway, the width and the height should already be correct because we copied from the clipboard. Uh, make sure your color mode is RGB color, not black and white. Sometimes it can be black and white or grayscale because the the copied image is black and white. So make sure this here this says RGB color. If it says grayscale, just go to RGB color and click on it, and then you can click create. Once you're here, you can Control V to paste, and that coloring page should be right there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold Alt and scroll with my mouse scrolling wheel. So if you hold Alt, you can use the wheel to zoom. And if you hold Control, you can actually move side to side. Control. So scrolling, normal scrolling is up and down. Hold Control to scroll left and right. Hold Alt. To zoom in, zoom out. So, to color something, the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do is make a selection of what you want to color. So, there are a lot of different selection tools. I'm just going to show you two in this video. Um, if you find this icon right here, it might look like it might have this uh, rectangle image, but it might also be one of these other options. Um, depending on what the defaults are in the version of Photoshop that you're looking at, you might not have exactly the same 
view here. Um, so it might be this picture of a paintbrush for quick selection tool that's kind of paintbrushing a, a dotted line or a magic wand. Um, I'm going to recommend that you start with the magic wand tool. What the magic wand tool does is it selects an area um, that is sort of all one color. Well, you've got all these patches of white that you want to fill in with color. So if you just click on a, on a patch with the magic wand, you'll notice that there are kind of little dotted lines around it now. That's something, uh, that's a selection. After you make a selection, you can fill in that selection easily. So I'll choose um, a brush tool with this paintbrush icon over here. And this number is how big the brush is. You'll notice right now, um, first of all, okay, I'm gonna choose a brush. I'm gonna choose a brush. Just to demonstrate really quickly. See how um, the, the, the circle that represents my brush size is kind of small. If I change this number to something bigger, the brush size is bigger. I'm gonna make it really big. You'll see why in a moment. Um, you might think that's way too big. It's going to go outside the lines. Remember, we made a selection. It's actually only going to fill in the selected, the selected area. So I'm going to choose yellow. I'll make this flower yellow. And now I'm just going to swipe all over that selection. You'll notice it didn't go outside the lines. That's the reason why I made that selection. Um, another thing you can do is while you're I'll switch back to my magic wand tool. While you're making selections, if you hold shift, you can select multiple things at once. So I've selected a bunch of flower petals. I'm gonna go back to my paintbrush. I don't have to change the size and the color again. It saved my size and color from last time. And fill in the rest, all of those areas that were selected. Um, you'll notice the representation of the brush is kind of a little bit fuzzy on the edges. If I really want to, I can take advantage of that sort of fuzzy edge. And so let's just say I want maybe the bottom of this section right here. I'm going to make a selection again. I might have selected black there. I don't think so. Maybe not. Um, let's just say I want to maybe have it fade a little bit. I can just... just use only the very edge of the brush on the bottom of this flower and now it's a little bit whiter down at the bottom. I can even change my color to white and I can just use the edge of the brush and do the same thing. Two other sections. I want, let's just say I wanted to add a little bit of variation. And now it kind of looks like the flower's fading to white a little bit. So it's not just one uniform color. Um, so there are a lot of different brush options. I'm not going to get into the details of all of them, but you can actually choose different types of different types of brush strokes. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use this sort of basic default brush stroke. Um, so, so far you've seen the magic wand tool, which allows you to select areas that are all the same color, like these sections of white that you want to fill in. You've also seen the brush tool uh, that allows you to just sort of paint in areas. Uh, two other tools that you might find useful are the quick select tool. It works kind of, simil kind of similarly to the, the magic wand. Um, it also selects areas that are uh, similar to each other. Um, so I can do kind of a similar thing, for example, on this flower. It, it's pre also pretty effective at selecting large white, uh, sort of large patches that are the same color. And uh, for filling in, and if you don't, if you don't want to use a brush, if you'd rather use a different tool, you might find the paint bucket easier to use. It just dumps all one color. So. Um, let's say I want this to be red. If I just paint bucket red, it fills in the entire selection red instantly. So you've got a few different options for filling in your coloring pages. You can use 
the magic wand to select uh, areas to fill in. You can use the quick selection tool to select areas to fill in. Uh, you can also use um, the brush to, um, to paint areas that you want to fill in with color, and you can use the paint bucket to just fill one uniform area of color. But when you do that, you can't sort of get more creative with, uh, with the edges of the brush, for example. So that's all there really is to coloring. Um, I could go on and fill in this whole coloring page, but I won't because you don't really need to see any additional skills to, to uh, finish this project. Uh, but you should remember that when you're using Photoshop, um, Photoshop does not autosave. So make sure that you save your work, file, save. And if you had already created a file name, it'll just use the file name that you that you used at the beginning. If not, make sure you give it a descriptive file name with your name so that you can find your stuff.